Our next example here is with a flat mirror. Now here's the front of the mirror, here's the back of the mirror, here's the object placed at an object distance 50 centimeters away from the mirror. So where will the image appear? What will be the magnification? Will it be upright or inverted? So forth. But before we continue with the problem, let's figure out something about flat mirrors. Here I indicate <coughs> excuse me, that the focal length is equal to infinity, meaning the focal point of a flat mirror is infinitely far away. Well, it turns out like this. Let's say we have a concave mirror and you shoot several rays towards the mirror from different, from different locations, but all parallel to the normal. They will all reflect back and reflect back through the focal point like this. This one will reflect back to the focal point like this. So to find the focal point of a mirror, all you do is shine light parallel to the normal to the mirror and when all the rays reflect back through a central point right there that is the focal point and the distance from the focal point to the mirror is known as the focal length. So with a flat mirror that's a little bit different. If we now look at a flat mirror we can see that when <clears throat> if this is the normal to the mirror and we shoot rays towards the mirror they are going to reflect back but they're going to reflect back exactly the same direction where they came from and those two rays will never converge. In other words, <clears throat> they will converge, of course, but you have to go infinitely far away, which means that the focal point in this case is infinitely far away. All right, so that explains why we use infinity for the focal length of a flat mirror. Now let's graphically find the image for this particular object. The first ray you're going to draw is straight to the mirror. And that image is going to then reflect back in the opposite direction and continue going in this way. And so, the observer over here, the eyeball, will see a ray coming straight back this way. The second ray we're going to draw is now a little bit different. Normally, we draw the ray through the focal point, but since there's no focal point here, or at least the focal point is infinitely far away, what we do instead is draw a ray from here to the mirror right there at the point where the normal hits the mirror. And of course, knowing the reflection laws of mirrors, the angle of incidence, theta sub i is equal to the angle of reflection and this ray will be reflected in this direction right there. So this is the reflected ray and that's ray number two. Again, the two rays that leave the mirror, one going parallel to the normal, the other one coming down here, they're not converging. So they're not forming an image over here, but the brain looks at these two rays coming uh, from the mirror and it says, oh, I know that this one came from back here somewhere and this one came from back here somewhere and where those two points converge, the brain will assume and actually see an image there. So there's the image and of course it's behind the mirror so we have the suspicion that that image is virtual, not a real image. All right, let's find the distance to the image. We use the equation S prime is equal to SF over s minus f, and of course the object distance s was 50 centimeters. Now the focal length in this case is infinity, divided by 50 minus infinity. Okay, if we look now at the denominator, 50 minus infinity, this 50 becomes insignificant, so we can simply leave that off and write this as 50 times infinity divided by minus infinity. Same thing, no difference at all. Now we can see that we have an infinity in the numerator, we have one in the denominator, we can cancel those out, we have a negative here, so this becomes minus 50 centimeters, which is the image distance. So this distance right here is 50 centimeters, it is minus, which places it behind the mirror, which of course makes the image virtual. So with flat mirrors we have virtual images. Virtual, that doesn't quite look like virtual right there, that's better. And to find the magnification, m, that's equal to minus s prime over s. Now minus times a minus 50 centimeters divided by the object distance, which was given as 50 centimeters. So the minuses cancel out and gives us 1, which means that the size of the image is exactly the same as the size of the object. They're same size. And not only that, the 1 is positive, which means that the image is upright. And so we write upright. So with a flat mirror, we can find the image distance, which happens to be the same as the object distance, just behind the mirror instead of in front of the mirror. We know that the image is virtual, we know that the magnification is 1, and we know that the image is upright. And that's how you work with flat mirrors.